Hey YouTube viewers, I am working on my 2004 Lexus ES330 uh, to replace the car radio. So right now it has the factory stock system which I believe is Pioneer. Uh, it came with the car, uh, there is nothing written on it. So I am assuming it is Pioneer. It works fine, there is no issue, uh, but I would want to have something that has GPS and oh, all cool features. Under 17, not admitted without a parent, now playing in select theaters everywhere October 23rd. Here we go, Sam's Club. Two boxes of 1,000 count premium baby wipes, two boxes. Mark Owen, you're the owner of Events and Adventures, is that right? Yep. What is Events and Adventures? Well, we're a social club for singles. We run 30 or 40 events a month. So here is everything that I have purchased uh, for my car. Uh, I bought it on Amazon. This one has GPS, uh, DVD, CD, MP3, Bluetooth, uh, all those fancy features. And it came for about like 160 bucks. Uh, so this system is, it looks good. Uh, what I liked about it is that uh, from the front side there are nice uh, lots of buttons. So I don't have to really use the screen a lot, LCD a lot. Uh, a lot of functions can be managed easily through the front end, uh, especially the volume. Um, <clears throat> the faceplate uh, came with a free backup camera. I don't intend to use this one. Actually, I have purchased a different one, but I'm not decided yet. Uh, I may end up using this one. I don't know. Uh, all the cabling for the backup camera. Uh, the GPS antenna. So, yeah. Uh, these are the, this is how the back of unit looks like. Uh, this yellow one, so there's an antenna connection. This yellow connector is for the rear view camera. Um, so this is for the preamp connections. So for preamp connections, this is the cable that connects. So you can get all the RCAs out uh, from this area and a GPS connector. And this is the amped uh, output. So for amp out output, there is another cable. So this time I'm going to use uh, amplified outputs. I will not connect anything here. Uh, ideally for Lexus because there is an external amplifier I should be connecting here to the preamp uh, but this time I am planning to connect it here because the harness cable which I bought um, is, is uh, from Metra TYTO01 this cable has some uh, some box in between which is used to adjust gain on the amplifier and as I was reading the instructions I think sometime back earlier they were making this with the RC connectors but now they are making it open ended so they can be connected to the amplified connections. So I intend to connect this to this end directly for input to this box. 
and the output of this one will go to the car directly. Uh, that's how I'm planning to make the connections. So it has a remote control also. And this is the camera which I bought. Um, I heard some good reviews, it's cheap, like 15 bucks uh, from uh, Amazon, this company. Uh, I don't know whether I will use this one or I will use the other one. Uh, we will think about it. I also ordered the faceplate uh, that hasn't come yet. I also noticed that this cable that comes with this camera is of no use because this cable has just the video uh, signal but there is no red power supply one. Without that this cable is really useless. Uh, this is used to connect the head unit to the backup camera as well as to the power supply and uh, if it is missing that red wire then I will have to put an, an, an additional red wire uh, right from the head unit to the back of car uh, like this one so it should be there like this one this is a good cable so this wire should be there so that uh, it can be connected one end can be connected to the head unit's uh, backup uh, trigger wire and the other end can go to the backup light to receive the 12 volt uh, current Anyway, so this is everything that I have so far and once I have done the connections between uh, the head units output and the car's harness, then I will come back. Thank you. Okay, I am uh, done with uh, preparing the warning, uh, wiring harness, uh, completed all the connections and uh, let me show you what I found, uh, some issues, some complexities, uh, not too difficult at all uh, because uh, the wiring on both the sides, uh, the wire coming from the head unit, new head unit and the Metra's uh, interfacing cable, uh, most of the wires have a color code match uh, but there was some complexities and let me explain you what was the complexities. Uh, this one page user instruction that comes from Metra for the for their warning, wiring harness, this is really good. It tells you about two uh, set of wiring harness, one is the 16 pin and one is the 20 pin. And that was a little bit confusing because on one side I do see the 16 pin and on the other side it is 14 pin. So I was confused initially like what is 20 pin. So this 16 pin goes here. So all the instructions written here are for the 16 pin wires which are coming from here. So naturally the 20 pin they were referring to was this end which appears as the 14 pin. Uh, actually this 14 pin wire has two ends. One is this black which is 14 pin and this white end which goes to the car and this is 20 pin. So they were actually referring to the to this side as a as a 20 pin and and explaining the the wires and how to connect it. Um, some of the color code wires are repeating on both the sides. So the same color code is present here and same color code is present on uh, on this side and both ends were open. So I followed the instructions which are mentioned here and it is very good that they have explained which wires to ignore. So uh, they tell you that. Uh, connect which wires on the 20 pin side and ignore which wire. Uh, there are more wires to be ignored, will not be used. So red, brown, light green, blue, pink, green, purple, orange, white. All of these wires are extra wires on the 16 pin side. Uh, all other wires have an exact color code match. Uh, so just ignore these wires. So I, I just kept them uh, aside, uh, did not use them and connected all the wires. Uh, some special new things that I tried, uh, that I'm trying this time is that uh, from this end there are two black wires. Here it mentions only black, one black wire. Uh, but actually there are two black wires. One is the thick 
black wire which is coming which is the ground wire uh, coming from the batteries a 12 volt battery I did not use this one I did not connect this black wire to stereo's black wire uh, my plan is to connect the ground to body of the stereo so I will take the ground from the by connecting the black wire here uh, a, a new wire um, and, and not to this one so I'm leaving this out for the time being there is one more black wire that comes from this end and that is the amplifier ground actually that that's written on the wire itself so I'm giving a ground to that wire also so let me show you the ground connections first okay so this is the black wire with the white stripe this comes from the car side it's uh, for the amplifier ground and this wire along with there are two ground wires I found coming from the grid, uh, head unit side this side uh, one is a thick ground and second is again a very thin ground and a brake wire ground so two wires coming from the head unit with the ground and a brake wire parking brake wire so all of these I have connected to a common wire which I will connect to the chassis of the head unit. So that's how I'm planning to give the ground and the reason I'm doing it because I read that uh, uh, otherwise there is chance to pick up the engine noise um, and this way we can avoid picking up the alternator or engine noise. So I'm going to try it. If it works fine, if it doesn't work then I will connect it to the black wire. Rest all wires were straightforward, uh, all color codes matched except for one wire which is used for uh, powering the amplifier. This one, uh, where is that one? This one, you see the color code difference. So, this is coming from the Metra's wiring harness side, it is the blue and white which is the universal standard for turning on the car's amplifier but the manufacturer of the head unit used uh, chose orange wire and labeled it as amplifier amplifier turn on wire labeled it correctly but used a wrong color completely which was confusing so I looked at the pin diagram uh, and as, as per the pin diagram uh, this is correct so wires position is correct on the on on this connector so I will just go by this if it does not turn on the amplifier if I don't hear any sound then I will check with the vendor because there is another wire which is blue and white but it is mentioned as something else See, there is a blue and white wire here, but it's mentioned as S, SW2. So, the SW2 wire is a white and blue stripe wire, uh, which should have been used for the turning on the power amplifier, but the vendor has messed up on the color codes. Uh, these are the wires which I did not connect. One is the antenna wire, power antenna. Uh, SW1 steering wheel control 1 and steering wheel control 2 so these three wires I did not connect to anything um, but rest every wires uh, has a one-to-one -one match and and it's connected um, then there is a wire which is a back wire pink colored wire and this wire will be connected to the reverse uh, power supply coming from the reverse side so uh, that video cable that has the red and power supply that will be connected to this one and this connection will happen when I will install the stereo in the car so that's everything and one more thing so there is a blue color
uh, kind of switch which is used for the adjustment of volume gain for the amplifier so I will move it little bit clockwise like about 50% uh, initially when I, when I do the install and, and then adjust it depending on what kind of sound comes out uh, of the car if it needs to be reduced or, or turned a little bit higher. Uh, from the reviews I heard I saw that some of the users they have put the gain as 90% and some have put the gain as 50% so not sure which one is the right uh, setting but I will just do some guess I'll start with 50%. Thank you. Okay, so as I, as I am still waiting for the faceplate to come, I started working on the back of the car trunk area to figure out how to install the backup camera. So I took out, I was able to take out this back cover and um, not so difficult. It was attached by these kind of clips that I was able to pull out just using a screwdriver and a plier about 10 or 12 but it did not come out even after that even after I pulled out all the clips because on the back side there are two white sockets so these sockets keep on holding this cover and you have to slide it out, you have to just pull it forward. So this mouth is open on the other side. So just pull it out of this mouth. And this lever was already loose. I think it was disconnected from the previous uninstall. So I'm not sure how this is connected. Um, so this could be something you'll have to figure out if you are following these instructions. In my case it was already disconnected so this was already loose and I was able to pull it out. Now after that I had to pull out this cover from the back lights, uh, license plate lights and actually if you see this cover on the back side has four screws so you need to figure out these four screws and unscrew them from the back side you will find these kind of nuts on the back side unscrew them but then in middle of it in the middle side here this piece also has a mouth that keeps on holding a plastic clip. I wasn't able to figure out so I just pulled it and it broke the plastic clip. It's like this. This is the back side. But all you need to do is just slide it out. So I wasn't able to figure it out at that time so I ended up breaking it. Anyway, so I have, I was able to easily drill two holes in middle and put the camera on it. Now my plan is to put this wire in from this side. So I was able to take this light out by just pushing on this back back hook or clip kind of thing. So just push it little bit towards the left and this light slides out which gives you this opening and I will take the wire in from this side to inside of the trunk and then close it. So that's one end of the uh, camera. After that I have to attach this to the back light here to the back lamp which is this white light. So once I trace the red and black wire of this lamp then I will connect the wires to this one. Okay, so it's installed now. 
and you see wire is in not sure if you can see it easily it's going inside from that light light was able to get in properly and it's hanging out from the other side and now I have to bring a wire from the front of the car to this area and connect it and then put the cover back as well as connect it to the backlight. here and here and on the side
Okay, the other screws are already missing. Okay. This is for clock and the hazard light and this is for the radio and the antenna, two cables for the antenna. Maybe this is the one that needs to be used on the new one. So no need to connect the climate control. Okay, so I started working on uh, the cabling since I took the stereo out and I did put in the GPS antenna cable. I was able to slip it in from uh, under the steering wheel side. There is an opening uh, from here. And I also was able to in the video cable, the, the rear backup cam uh, video, video cable and its red wire, it is now hooked. So I did put in the, the new wiring harness is already connected, uh, is already connected to the car and I found a spot under, I'm not sure camera can focus it with this bad light. So you can see in that corner, so it's really at the bottom of the, uh, near, near the gearbox and everything where I found some spots. So I have slipped in that amplifier box there 
and the cable connector is coming up uh, GPS and the, the rear backup camera cable is inserted and I used this channel to slip the wire in so the wire is going the backup camera wire is going from here the GPS antenna wire also come from this side up and the antenna is placed there okay so this wire is going from this channel you can just pull it out from your hand and slip the wire in it's a little bit hard but it it does open up so it's going from here until back of the car until the back seat of car so it's coming here and now my plan is to pull this seat up actually you can just pull it out uh, and then slip the wiring from this from this pocket to the back side of the trunk so once the wire is in the trunk then I can connect it to the camera so this way the whole wire will stay hidden uh, maybe it's better to use these channels instead but I never opened up these channels so I'm not using these ones I just took the wire from the top side okay so I was not able to pull out the seat I tried my best but it seems like it is jammed so <clears throat> the wire that is coming from the top side uh, that I showed in the earlier scene I was able to tuck in in this space easily and then brought it here And then from this side I took it inside the trunk so it's not completely hidden but it's hidden from this view uh, so passengers in the car will not see any wire anywhere it's neatly hidden everywhere and on the passenger side on the on the trunk side I took it out from here brought it under the carpet and took it up to the panel and attached it to the camera so now I need to connect this side to the backup light and this is the camera power supply that has to be connected to the to the backup light and that will complete the backup camera installation and then I can put the cover okay so I was able to pull out this bulb just by rotating it anti-clockwise a little bit this is the backup light bulb the reverse light bulb this black and white wire is the ground and yellow and green is the hot wire so I connected it I also put in an extension of the red wire so so it's connected to this video cable now this is my extension wire coming from the backlight and this is the signal the power supply going to the backup camera so connections are complete now I will just tape it up and put the cover back okay it's a done deal all wires are hidden now the cover is back I can see only this wire but other than that it seems neat putting this cover was not an issue at all Easiest thing. ok so I have received the new face plate for the installation of a double den car stereo uh, this is from Metra 998158G and it comes with uh, this extra pocket it's for single din install also so this is how the face plate looks like to the old one it looks almost same 
but there is nothing written on it so like all of these symbols Lexus premium sound system all that stuff uh, is missing this is a plain absolutely plain plastic uh, good quality color finish also looks good um, one thing I would like to share is that you need to transfer the chrome from both the sides so this chrome is still present here I need to pull it out and transfer and all of these uh, ducts etc the accessories they were really snap on and easier to take them out uh, nothing difficult at all there are clips on the side just need to pull out from those clips so I need to transfer all this stuff and it came out with some side brackets also so now I will transfer it to the new plate and see how it looks after all the transfer okay <clears throat> so transferring the chrome and fitting in all the accessories was not an issue it was a snap on and I transferred these yellow clips also everything got transferred easily but the biggest problem is that these marks shows that the new unit is bigger by this much size neither it is fitting from the from the sideways also it is bigger and bottom side is also bigger so I need to cut some plastic out of this uh, this face plate in order to push in the new unit into it so it will impact the look of it I don't know if I can do it cleanly we'll see so using the saw I had to cut both the sides it doesn't look nice uh, so I cut this one and this one using this saw and I was able to cut it but it made it look so ugly now I think I will have to hide it by using the front border now okay I have inserted the unit now and kept the face plate out the border side out um, there is no way it flushes because the body is angular and this is straight so there are gaps but nothing more we can do it's just that these units are bigger in size but other than that I guess I am now ready to put it in the car and see how it looks and functions So my installation is complete and I tested all the functions, it's working beautifully including the backup camera. Um, everything is working fantastic, in fact my speakers were never so lively as they are now. I am feeling like I have added the amplifier now in this car, uh, it's even better than the sound I was getting earlier. Uh, there is absolutely no, no engine noise, so I think that trick on the black wire, ground wire not to ground it to the battery did work. So this concludes my installation of uh, double din aftermarket unit in Lexus 2004 ES330. Thank you.